If you've ever been to Lake Martin, there's no question why it's called Alabama's Treasured Lake. With miles of shoreline and gorgeous views, the days are endless with possibilities of new adventures around every corner. But perhaps one of the most famous attractions on the lake is a small island not far from the dam itself. It's easily one of the oldest and most popular destinations that keeps people coming back year after year. But how do the goats get there? Who takes care of them? And does this island really live up to all the hype? Today, Stephen and I venture out and explore the legendary Goat Island. <laughs> Hey, that's me, Shaylee, and that's my boyfriend, Steven. Normally when you see us, we're out on some big crazy adventure exploring the outdoors and living larger than life. But what you might not know is Steven has actually been diagnosed with a rare disease that basically breaks down all the muscles in his body. And if that isn't hard enough, he's just now recovering from cancer too. But that isn't gonna slow us down. Our blog is going to take you on exciting adventures all across Alabama, explore myths and urban legends, and meet some new local friends along the way. So buckle up and enjoy the ride, and welcome to Pelican Point Expeditions. Hey everyone, it's Shaylee and Steven. We are so excited to go explore one of Lake Martin's hottest attractions. If you've ever been here to Lake, you know there's no shortage of things to see, places to go, and stories that have been handed down from generation to generation. I know I've been coming here for many years, and one of the first stories that I heard about was Goat Island. So it's actually this island not far from the Martin Dam where goats actually live. But what's so fascinating about this is nobody actually really knows how the goats originally got there on the island. It can be seen labeled on maps as far back as the 1970s. But stories of goats on the island date back even further than that. Um, we're talking a little bit about Goat Island and the uh, mystery surrounding the where the goats came from. And of course, I've grown up on Lake Martin for my whole life, 50 years. And my, my grandmother, Mercy Moore, uh, would take us to see the goats regularly. And back then, you had to hunt for them. They weren't always just down there at their uh, recreational area. You'd have to go all over the island to have them. But she says, that some people on that side of the island had had found them on the island and kind of helped take care of them through the through the winter months but i never really know for sure where they came from i think you asked me about uh, goat island well when i was little they used to say there's an island out there that's got goats all over it and nobody knows how they got there so we would drive around and I never saw a goat, but I always looked because I thought, surely next trip I'm gonna do it. And then one time I, they said, there it is, you know, and I said, I think I saw it. But the story was that the water went down one time and for this island, and while it was down, some goats walked across, and then the water came up, and that was the first. And I always remember wanting to go out and drive around Chimney Rock trying to see if you could locate uh, these goats. So what we've decided we're gonna do is we're gonna get to the bottom of this legend and we're gonna see if we can find out how Goat Island actually got started and what's the story behind these goats. So come along and watch us and let's figure it out. Welcome to Goat Island! 
Okay, so we are here on Goat Island and I'm trying to figure out, you know, how did the goats get on here? There's a lot of wild stories out there. Um, one of the more famous ones is when they flooded in the waters to create the lakes, all the goats gathered together and ended up on this island. Another one some people are talking about, you know, there's just a real big massive storm one time and um, all the goats just suddenly appeared. So let's see if there's any truth to these stories. Well, I want to ask you, so how do you think the goats got to Goat Island? That's a good question. Um, definitely the storm. I heard you say the storm and that sounds, there was a storm and they all came together. That's a good one. Uh, they said when the water gets really low that there's kind of like a land bridge that goes across. Maybe if the water was low they came across the land bridge. Yeah. That's interesting. That's, That's a good, good idea. He saw it storm one night and the, the goats appeared. He told me that last year. I don't remember his name. There was a storm and then they He's appeared on the island. They could have swam. I don't know. They, they could have swam. That's not too far. They could have swam from over there. All these stories were absolutely fascinating, but we want to get the opinion of two people who knew the island better than anyone else. Meet Ricky and Stacy, owners of All the Goats on Goat Island. Thank you guys so much for taking a few minutes to talk to us today about the goats. I know everyone's just dying to know. How did Goat Island get started? So we've researched it back to the 50s and there's just been goats on the island since then. Um, we met um, a little guy here, what, last year or the year before? And that's how we knew we, from the 50s that there's been goats on the island because he told us he was at a certain age when he came to the island and there was goats here. Um, wow. So it's just a tradition. I grew up around the lake and I remember little being my parents bringing me to the island. Um, the goats were never really friendly. Um, supposedly they rented goats all, um, in the summer so like you could throw food at them but you couldn't touch them and so my father took over about 10 years ago and so here we are wow that's fascinating it was starting to sound like the origins of goat island we're gonna have to remain a mystery but we still wanted to explore more about the island we see today Ricky and Stacy took us on an awesome tour of the island to see the day-to-day -day operations and meet some of the local favorites Sunshine. She is the oldest goat on the island. She is 10 years old. She is one of the, she is the only original goat that we have left that my dad purchased 10 years ago. This is Sweetie Pie. And she was, she is um, three years old. And she has twins this year, Marley and Mo. They were born in February. And she is very vocal. She is one of the loudest ones and she's usually always like making her noises. But she is also an, one of the island's favorites. And this is Bug. This is usually everybody's favorite on the island. She is also three years old and she had triplets this year. She had two girls and a boy and their name Sissy, Sassy, and Scoot. But that's why we took them home. Yeah. They would be having right. and she is very laid back and just one of the sweetest, sweetest things ever. This is Miss Rosie, and she is the most gentle goat on the island. She usually just stands back, but she is very gentle. And she had two babies last year, twins, and this is one of them, and his name is Smalls. And the other one is beside you, and his name is Lakey. <laughs> hey, buddy. But as you can tell, they're just all very loving. The day that they're born, I mean, they're they're being held by our, by our kids until they come to the island, and so they're very just all gentle and very loving. And how do you get the goats to the island? Um, by our pontoon boat. We bring them in the spring, and then we take them home in the winter. Um, we try to leave them on the island as long as we can, according to the wa to the to the weather and the water. Um, they're healthier on the island. There's not as, they don't, there doesn't seem to be as many parasites as there is on homeland, so we try to leave them as long as we can, and then we take them home for a few months and they come back in the spring. You bring them all by pontoon boat? Yeah. Who's your favorite goat? Well, as of right now, it's this one. <laughs> 
So this is Marley the goat, and she is named after Marley Hi. the girl. <laughs> How sweet. How do you like having a goat named after you? It's so fun. She's so sweet. She looks sweet. It was becoming very clear that these were not some random goats left on an island, as they may have been many years ago. These goats were very socialized, loved, and well taken care of. Um, we work very closely with the, um, some of the veterinarians at the large animal clinic at Auburn University and we try our best to follow all of the recommendations from them. Um, what they recommend is they can have chips and bread, you know, as like a snack. Um, cheat, they love Cheetos. Um, we bring them their nutrition every day so it kind of balances out their diet. Um, and then what they have told us is they don't they say no corn because if they get corn it can just get hard and kind of crystallize in their stomach and make them very sick. How did these structures get on the island? Um, Alabama Power owns the island and they actually built these structures this winter for them. Okay. To enjoy. And if you're a big fan and looking for some cool gear, Ricky and Stacy showed off the official Go Island merchandise. And the best part? All the money raised through their products goes directly back to the island and helps fund the care for all of the goats. So on our Goat Island page, we offer some shirts. We try to change the design every year. Um, and this is our shirts. This is the front this year and this is the back. It's got Lake Martin on there. We also have cups and koozies. So go check it out. As much fun as we were having, our trip to the island was coming to an end. Even though we may not have solved the mystery behind Goat Island, we did have an amazing trip filled with stories that will carry on the legacy for years to come. So this is on our to-do list every time we come to Lake Martin. We love Goat Island. It's a must do. <laughs> it's a highlight of our trip. The first thing that he gets out of the car and says is, when are we going to go to Goat Island? Hey, HGTV was here last year. And Sam, the producer, she, you know, she's been everywhere, and she said this was by far the coolest place she'd ever been. Like, she didn't want to leave. It is, I feel like everybody who comes here feels like they kind of own the goats or take take pride in taking care of the goats. So. I think the, the most enjoyment is uh, getting to meet people like y'all and, and the kids that are from around the lake, but also throughout the United States and even we've met people from other countries that come here. We've talked to them before and they're, uh, they've always said they've heard about Goat Island but they've never actually experienced it and they get here and just couldn't believe that it was actually real and um, just knowing that the kids get to, you know, they'll, I mean, they'll grow up and they'll, this is something that they'll remember for the rest of their lives. So be sure to go out there and support Goat Island. Um, we've included links to the Facebook page. Also, um, they've got tons of merchandise where all the money goes to helping fund Goat Island and care of the goats. So be sure to check that out and send any kind of donations that you can to help support one of Lake Martin's oldest traditions and hottest attractions. Never miss an adventure. Like and follow Pelican Point Expeditions on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And stay tuned for the next episode on Lake Martin TV.